Bonjour mes amis, hi guys, bonjour Simon. Bonjour mes amis, hi guys. So let's do a little special uh, jingle for this one, State of the Collection. State of the Collection. État de la Collection. État de la Collection, édition 2024. There you go, 2024 State of the Collection, and that's not even all of it, but that's the... It's half, uh, not even, maybe a little bit. Yeah, it's a part of it, it's a subset, an yeah. échantillon, simple of it. But I think you have your, your favorite pieces uh, in here. Yeah, pretty much. So as I was telling you, uh, you know, there's some flippers. I'm the opposite of a flipper. I won't say I'm a hoarder, but I never got rid of any watches that I've bought since over the past six, seven plus years that I've been collecting. Happily married. Happily married, yes. For, forever. Forever, yeah. And um, yeah, wow. So the first impression I think everybody's going to say is that you like blue and you like steel and yeah. Guilty as charged. So uh, yeah, my favorite color is indeed blue. Reminds me of the national flag of Quebec where I'm from. Of course. Of course, I need to plug this again. I also tend to wear blue most of the time. But yeah, favorite color is blue. And it's, I think there's different shades of blue. And I like steel. Steel and blue uh, are pretty much the color. I do have a couple of watches with uh, green face, but not so much. They are not here today can go wrong and we've reviewed some of these uh, watches i remember we went to the the marriott in Causeway Bay and we compared our grand seikos so uh, this is yours still looking uh, amazing and uh, that's one that's really has uh, stood the test of time what well, it was just six months ago but uh, <laughs> maybe more than that <laughs> no more than time that i think fast, yeah yeah time uh, flies here. time flies but look at this uh, I see uh, snowscape. They call it the snowscape. So we have snowscape. the snowflake. Snowscape dial. <laughs> snowscape. <laughs> now it's a very interesting dial. I think uh, the one of the strength of uh, Grand Seiko is indeed uh, their dial. The it's like a spaceship. Huh? Yeah. What do you think? The curves on it and everything. And of course, when we did the review uh, almost a year ago... You mind if I play with your watches like this? I get ah, my gloves on. As long as you don't drop them on the other watches, you can do whatever you want. You know, I once dropped my, uh, my Rolex uh, C-Dweller on my uh, Patek Calatrava. Ouch. Yeah, that left a nice little mark. Uh, wow. Yeah, so that's a great start. So this one has the uh, high... Oh my God, this movement. This is the one that... Uh, we don't talk about enough because beautiful architecture and it does everything that the, the Swiss do and, and then some more. Uh, it's high B2. Look at it going. Yeah, 9S A5. I think it's out of control. Simon, I think it's out of control. Is it? Yeah, look, look at it. <laughs> okay, that's about 25 ticks per second. And uh, it's got the little Batman wings, beautiful uh, rotor and thinner than uh, they did before. So they really... Uh, stepped up and well they did every yeah, it's less than 12 millimeter uh, i think for me like the the perfect uh wow. thickness is below 12 millimeter this one is 11 dot something outrageous so, yeah. uh does it does it run well it runs very well so far so good yeah the last time i've timed it i think i don't remember it was plus two three seconds next oh, that's great what's your rotation like oh man so okay i don't know if i'm uh if I have a, a sickness or if I have an obsession, but usually I factor in so many things. I look at the <laughs> weather uh, because here in Hong Kong can be very humid. So you don't want to wear uh, a leather strap when it's like uh, yeah. too much humidity. I look at uh, how I dress. I look at who's I going to be meeting on that day. So there's numerous, numerous, numerous factor. But I would say the one that I wear the most and we're going to get to them later uh, is maybe the Gérard Perigo Laureato. Uh, the Datejust 36. Uh, when I travel, I usually go with the Tudor Black Bay and uh, the, all the Omegas, I wear them quite often. The Zenit, I wear, the one we see on the table, I think I rotate pretty much on them, uh, except maybe the Longines, which I haven't been wearing for a long time, actually. Yeah, very beautiful. And, uh so yeah, what do you think now, looking back at yes. the Longines, we did a video, at, did the, a video. at the bar uh, about it. In Tycoon, yes. Very well uh, very well made, and uh, they have a new version, uh, I think smaller. So I think you just uh, mentioned about the new version. 
Uh, with a wrist of my size, I rather go for 39 millimeter, 38. I think the, the perfect uh, comfort zone, perfect ratio has been like 37 to 39. And this one is 42. So the, when we reviewed it, I told you that this watch is almost uh, check all the boxes that I like, you know, dress yeah. watch, uh, clear case back, uh, deploy and clasp. Uh, you have the, the numeral en laser engraved with the right uh, depth in it, blued and It tick all the boxes except it's a bit large. Mm. So it should be very elegant, but I think on a wrist that would be bigger than yours and mine, it would be better. And if you go on uh, Longines website or if you, you will see they release a new version, like it's 38. Yeah. It's the, the 7 is beautiful, mm. by the way, the font that they used. Yeah, the font is so nice. Huh? Mm as well it's not yeah it's a sort of a stylized breguet numeral one it's not quite breguet it's uh, mm. they go a bit further with the um the arabesque i yeah. don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> uh but yeah the the moment uh we saw that they were releasing a smaller version i was cursing them yeah. in your in your name <laughs> knowing that uh probably you would be uh and a lot of people will, will, will prefer a smaller a slightly smaller size I think it's uh, it's fair enough, and uh, Longines have done that also for their Zulu uh, watch. Uh, I don't think it's very nice practice, uh, Zolin, but still, uh, still it's great and reminds me of you know the Kikuchi Nakagawa kind exactly. of yeah, yeah, watches. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now Hida, uh, what's his ne name again? Hida San. Yep. Um, it reminded me of, of this the first time I, I, yeah. I saw it, and that's one of the reasons I snapped it. I think that and was. And of course, uh, Patek. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's very well made. And uh, yeah, I always said uh, it would be cool if Longines, uh, these are the master collection, but it would be cool if they were doing uh, like a mastery collection, uh, putting a, a very nice movement like they used to produce themselves uh, back in the days where. Uh, uh, you know, some more than 70 years uh, ago, Longines was uh, was a different brand. Oh yeah, totally. And but now that they, they've gone, they've gone so strong. Of course, they're part of a group, and it's not really them. But they could get a, a, a movement from the group, uh, nicely finished, with an upcharge of five, six thousand mm. dollars, just for those who want. Uh, and I'm sure that they will be very successful. The question is, uh, would it uh, would it step? On the territory of the uh, the brand that's uh, just above uh, the the Omega, I mm -hmm. suppose. But you know, when you look at their back catalog, and and here in Hong Kong, we have uh, quite few uh, acquaintances and friends that are collector. And there are some people they are obsessed with the vintage uh, Longines. And if you get a, a chance to to meet some of these people, or if you get a chance to look at their back catalog, you will see man they were doing amazing, amazing watches. Mm -hmm like gold watches, dress watches, like it's, it's the, some of them are so beautiful. Uh, it's a different company, I think now, but still the brand had a very uh, long and interesting story. And at some point, uh, I think that was pretty much. Uh, it's a good looking movement. Yeah, the movement but is still uh, good looking. But you know, I like the Swatch group and uh, I think Swatch group tends to listen. So maybe if someone at Swatch is, uh, is listening, I think uh, there's probably a market for people, uh, enthusiasts, who would love to have a watch li like this with a, with a higher end, maybe a, a breguet uh, movement with a nice finishing, mm -hmm. or just, you know, have a long jeans do a, have a, a workshop with something uh, a bit special like uh, like Omega does mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. the Ed White and the, the Tourbillon. Mm -hmm. uh, and they still do great, great product, great. huh? You of remember course. like two weeks ago, you and I were walking together and we just went into the, the boutique here in, in Central just to take a look. They, they have a nice uh, moon phase, surprisingly. Like yeah. the latest one, 38 millimeters, very good product, very nice, uh, a bit thick. But uh, if you compare this to the Chargère Le Coultre, uh, which I also love, mm. I know you have your own take on, uh, on GLC. No, but, no, uh, I, I said in my previous video, it's very nice, of course. Mm. Uh, but um, will you regret not keeping the money for the Calatrava? Uh, yeah, that's the thing, and especially with special the price enough, increase. Special enough. Uh, yeah, those of you that, uh, if you've been into watches for many, many years, like maybe you remember back in the days, like the uh, the Master Control uh, Ultra Thin uh, Moon Phase was like 60,000 Hong Kong dollar, and now it's above 80 something. So, so past the 10,000 US. Yeah, past 10,000 US. And I think Longines we saw together was like mm. less than 20, 
like for a fourth of the price, you have a moon phase. Of course, it's not the same caliber, it's not the same company, but it's, it's still interesting to compare that. You have two different brands that can come up with a, a product that from far away, at least visually speaking, looks pretty much the, the par, right? And the new power reserve is very beautiful as well, a bit of Art Deco touches. So they're, they're doing uh, really cool things at uh, Longines. It's, uh, it's a great brand and overall I like the Swatch Group. I think they, yep. do, uh, they do great stuff. So we know the Laureato well. I was just telling Simon that uh, I'm still pining for the uh, Onyx Style Infinity version. Uh, uh, here we have, uh, you, you got this one before. They got carried away with the price. Exactly. Thinking they could get some of that uh, Excitement in the in the market mm. and uh, almost like the minute, like the day they increase the prices, they haven't sold oh, yeah. any any of these anymore at the boutique, and everybody was like, "Whoa, whoa!" whoa. Actually, yeah, there was a funny story because if you may remember, I think that was only the the second video you and I we 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 shot we made together, and I was telling you the first video we made together. Oh, by the way, the first video we made together was a collection review that was already almost yeah. three something years ago. And at that time, I was telling you the next one would be the Gérard Pigrigo. And they called me exactly that same day. And uh, long story short, I managed to get like 33% <laughs> discount on this yeah. one. And that was before the price increase. That was before like everybody got uh, crazy about uh, those integrated steel sport uh, bracelet watch. And uh, you won't believe how much I paid for this one. It was like yeah, yeah. really <laughs> given. And Same for me when I got the Chronomaster Sport, like the first day I run to the AD when they announced mm -hmm. it, they had it, which is great. And 30% uh, off. And then uh, the day after I was gone, uh, they wanted uh, maybe 15 or they wanted the full price. And again, they increased the price and they killed it. So Zenit, uh, GP, GLC, they, they, they kind of killed it when uh, they, they could have sold uh, a, a lot more. But anyway, this one blue dial looks, uh, looks gorgeous. Uh, you know, GP, one of the oldest uh, uh, manufacturers, uh, Vacheron uses GP uh, movements in certain uh, watches. Go gorgeous piece from the 70s. The third one uh, after the Nautilus and the uh, and the uh, Royal Oak um, and uh, but, but a very diff different, I mean, not very different, it's the same uh, family, but now that everybody has their, their theirs, I think they, they have a style that, uh, that's very theirs. Uh, that you recognize the Laureato, mm. with those big polished uh, center links. Um, yeah, it's a great daily, right? Oh, it's a great daily. This one, uh, I'm not afraid to wear it, uh, even though that can be, I mean, at some point, some of you may remember, I think that was like two years ago, the price increase was just crazy madness. Mm -hmm. Like on Qu Chrono 24, like they tripled the price, quadrupled the price at some point. Now it ca kind of calmed down, but uh, yeah. even at that time, I, I did not want to get rid of it because I just love it. It's, it's a daily I wearer. You it's enjoy nice. more when you get a great, great price for it. Mm -hmm. So you enjoy it without wearing about uh, pricing. Mm. And uh, by the way, shout out to uh, the uh, timepiece gentleman who was buying the skeletonized ones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to. Uh, uh, <laughs> I hope he did really well with those. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The skeletonized are actually very beautiful. And uh, of course, uh, GP, they do uh, those um, triple bridges to beyond. Yeah. Like fantastic uh, watches. Trying so, to uh, hype a little bit the skeleton. Respect for, <laughs> for, for, for GP. They don't get the uh, the kudos that they they deserve. Mm. Uh, it's one of those great um, manufacturers, just like uh, Chopin. Uh, Chopin being independent, GP uh, GP not. Uh, but uh, yeah. So the other one that you wear a lot on holiday. Oh yeah, this the, one. Oh man, this one is Black like Bay blue. I used to have that one too. Oh, just gorgeous piece. And it won the Grand Prix de l'Horlogerie. Uh, Genevoise, those of you may remember, that was in the year 2020 or 2021. Yeah, the caveat is that uh, Tudor has to win a prize every year. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the jury uh, will uh, concur, but uh, rightly deser deserved because uh, who could not love uh, that watch? And you ask the, the, size, the watch by default if you have $4,000 to spend. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> what, what if someone comes to me and they say, "Oh, Simon, I just want to enter the the, the game of watch collecting." Uh, first thing I will ask them, like, how much are you willing to spend? Yeah. And uh, if they say, like, uh, more 20,000, 25,000-ish uh, Hong Kong dollar, I would say, like, just go for two door. You cannot go this wrong. This is the game. And uh, shout out to Artem Straps. Yes, sir. Oh, it Sponsor may... of the channel. <laughs> no. uh, okay, are they? Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Look at this, guys. Uh, ah. <laughs> put it side by side. The Omega and Tudor. No. Any uh, resemblance is just uh, yeah. in your mind. <laughs> but it's interesting. Very good it? straps. Actually, uh, I think I've told the story in the video from the, the Snoopy, but one of the main reasons I bought the Artem strap on the Tudor Black Bay was because I really enjoyed that strap on the Snoopy, and I wanted to have a very, very, very similar uh, mm. look and feel. So that's why I, I took this one. And as you can see, that's a nice one. It's, it's very nice. And back to the Tudor. So uh, as you were saying, uh, that's the watch that I will always take by default when I travel and I just came back from Uzbekistan of all the places in the world, wanted to explore a new country, very interesting, post-Soviet Republic with a very strong Persian and Turkic influence, beautiful place. And that's the watch, uh, well, I brought a few of them, but I always yes. bring this one. Yes, guys, if you go to Uzbekistan, don't bring a collection of watches that's worth half of their monthly GDP. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> that was not <laughs> the first time in my sorry, life. Sorry, I'm being yeah, very yeah. cool. I love. He's, he's speaking. No, he's speaking phone at me at me because uh, what happened? This is the first time in my life that I, I get stopped at the border and uh, they scan my carry-on luggage and they ask me like, oh, seems you have some watches in yeah, there, you sir. Like a VIP. <laughs> They asked me to show them all the watches that I brought, prices, proof of possession, proof they were not gift. How did Anyways, you prove it? Oh, I just I show my Instagram account. So Simon oh, says wrist, wristwatch. Yes. Simon says wristwatch. <laughs> Simon says wristwatch. David S W. David S W. No, 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 no. Simon <laughs> says wristwatch. Simon, hello Archie. Hope you're well. We love you. Uh, yeah, so you had the, you had that one. Did you take also the GP? No, I took the uh, the Mont Blanc actually. Ah, yeah, yeah. when you travel, you feel the need yeah. to take. You a need world a world timer. timer, of course. You need a world timer. It doesn't really make that much. Actually, time. that's the one that attracted the most attention of the <laughs> Border Patrol. <laughs> this <Yeah>. one, <laughs> because look at it. Uh, this is not the original strap. This is a shout out to uh, Mr. Chrono. Uh, this is a Camille Fournet uh, yeah, I strap. Got the very similar one Just on, my, the uh, brand, on my Cartier uh, tank. And uh, yeah, you got a fantastic deal. It was the big sales at the uh, Oriental uh, watch. Yes. And, uh, yeah, the yeah, I remember when you got Crazy that deal. Crazy deal. I think uh, it was discounted 70%. Can I push the button? Can I push the button? Can yeah, I push go, the go, button? Go, 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 go. Bang, bang, bang. bang. Cling. Bring, <laughs> us, bring us back to Beijing. Oh, yeah. I think I was stuck on the, uh, on, uh, was it? Karachi, because it's the same, uh, yeah. Oh, Karachi. Karachi, yeah. So Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, so yeah, and uh, shout Pakistan. Shout out to everyone in Karachi and uh, Uzbekistan. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to all my Uzbek listener. Yeah. <laughs> What's yeah. the capital of Uzbekistan? Tashkent. Tashkent. Yes. So if you're in Tashkent, shout out. Give us a thumbs up. They're mad because it's <laughs> Karachi that uh, is on the... Yeah, well, the uh, same way it's Beijing. Oh, Beijing. Oh, we cannot say that. Love Beijing. No, we cannot talk Love about China. that. Love Beijing. Yeah. But yeah, that could have been Hong Kong. And at some point in time, it was Hong Kong. Aha, you have Anchorage. Yeah. And for the little story, it's story time. Story time. On Arctic Watch Reviews. Let's compare the Omega cities. Omega forgot what... Uh, the capital of uh, was it Alaska. Alaska, yeah. Was and they put Alaska. Oh, <laughs> that's lame. <laughs> like, oh, Anchorage is going to be too long. So no, I think it was too long. So they put Alaska. But the rest is Denver, New York, and then they put the state Alaska. Mm. Um, Interesting. But so it's not the capital anyway. It's it's the state it's capital. State capital, yeah. Really, but state capital. Or right? yeah, we have state or capital, the main city. Main city. But yeah, yeah. The, you got. Uh, but encourage. Encourage. It's, it's always interesting the way they choose uh, those cities. They, they're pretty much standard, I would say, but you know, sometimes it's always interesting to see when Paris yeah. is replaced by Geneva, as an example, or Bien or, or, Bien or Brussels, in, in your case. Uh, and I think I might have seen a watch where instead of uh, New York, they put Montreal. And I felt I, I need to remember which brand. Maybe that was a Canadian brand, but that was uh, quite interesting to I think see. Only Jezer still uses Hong Kong. 
Yeah. Shout out, I, Jeja, yeah, shout you. out. Thank you. Love and hate relationship with them. I still really want uh, Jaja Le Coultre. Oh, we don't, uh, we don't hate them. No, I think uh, what, we don't we're, hate. what we were saying uh, is that uh, we thought that they could do much better or take a lot bigger part of the market by mm -hmm. changing some of the line of uh, watches. What I would really love to do them to do is to do like uh, something like duometre or the complications like this in the 30, 50 grand uh, level, mm. uh, competing a bit with uh, with longer. And, but anyway, I would not try to talk about uh, Jeje. Uh, one day I'm sure you're gonna get the right deal on the, oh, yeah. on the moon. One day we'll oh, come to way, this guys, channel if you have with an the ultra, moon phase. Ultra thin moon to sell in Hong Kong. Uh, Simon is interested. I am indeed. This uh, this or an Omega triple calendar. Cosmic moon phase from the 60s. Or yeah, but 50s. you know that they're going to make one. Yeah. You know it's I know. I should not know, but I have a very, very strong feeling that this year is the year of the reissue of the triple calendar. Yeah, it's going gonna, it's gonna to happen. I think it's the, the year of the complications, calendar complications. Yeah, with Zenit already releasing one, we can expect other brands to follow. Yeah, it's one of the, the greatest. Uh, Looking world timers coming at a reasonable price uh, and a chance to own a Mont Blanc, you know. Mont Blanc does yeah. uh, good watches, uh, great things, very expensive ones with uh, Minerva calibers as well. That's my uh, second Mont Blanc. I own two of them and I would love to own a Minerva caliber, caliber as well. I, I like the brand. Where shall we go next? How about uh, Zenith? There you go. Uh, gorgeous piece. Yeah. Uh, so the Zenith, classic, the classic look. That's the classic. This one is the, called the classic. Yeah, it's the El Primero, uh, le classic. <laughs> le premier. Le premier. El Primero. El Primero. This, uh, beautiful thing. High beat, world class feel. And, uh, oh, it is uh, running. Was it? No, now it's running. Yeah. I mean, this is a classic design and... Uh, some of you may remember when we did the original state of the collection. I've told you that this was maybe the first luxury-ish watch uh, mm. I got for myself. Before that, I got a couple of Seiko, uh, one Mont Blanc. Uh, shout out to my wife that gave me the Mont Blanc for Christmas uh, many years ago. But this one is the uh, yeah Zenit. I really love the brand. Uh, I love uh, the sub dial, the, the 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 three colors: classic gray, silver, yeah. and blue. And you're still interested in getting a Chronomaster Sport? Maybe, maybe not. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, yeah, I was interested to get the, the white version of the Chronomaster Sport. And then they really so many different uh, variations. Yeah. And there, there is this one in Japan. Uh, and so every time there's somebody traveling to Japan, I told them, like, please have a look if you have the one that looks like the plat uh, platinum, platona. Daytona, yeah, platona. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, actually one of our friends, <laughs> he managed to find me one, but that was not a good timing financially. But uh, yeah, it's they are still on the market. Some of them uh, on touch. Yeah, they do a lot of product and the, the open heart. Uh, the, uh, the latest yeah. open heart are very nice. The they're white they're face nice. open heart. Oh, there's still so many watches in Zenit, uh, especially over the past two, two three years that I yeah. enjoy. I'm worried for them. Uh, I mean, it's good that they're part of a big group because uh, I think the prices ha ha have gone up. They released lots of things. Now they have the uh, full calendar on the original. Uh, that's what they call the mm. Chronomaster. Oh, I've tried that triple. Tried it, yeah, I've like tried it. So it. I, you know, I told you I, yeah, on the, the back of it. I think the lug high wears very yeah, often. Yeah, 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 yeah. Designs, so bizarre. Like, uh, the lugs extend, but uh, it's a 38 millimeter. But for some reason, I felt that it were even bigger than this one, which is 42. Mm. So the proportion were yeah, a, a bit of a shame off. because, uh, as an object, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful piece. Mm. That uh, so you stick for now to uh, with this one. I mean, you have one, mm. don't need to have uh, yeah. another one. But if you got another one, maybe uh, would you consider selling, selling one? Nah. No, no not, especially not this one because this one have a, yeah, a story with it. Yeah, all of them actually. So we've just done a full review on the channel. I'll put the link in the description of uh, this. Uh, the Santos de Cartier. La Santos de Cartier. So it's the medium uh, size. So we're not going to go through all the details, but easy to remove the links, easy to change to the, the strap, the brown strap, white dial, uh, classic and never go wrong, beautiful, fully integrated. Uh, before anybody did it, you know, early uh, 20th century design. Uh, yeah, everybody loved this watch. 
Uh, it's a classic. It. Cannot go wrong with that. Gotta, gotta love it. Uh, Where do we go? Oh, Grand oh, Seco. Grand Seco. Yeah. Uh, again, when people want a GMT, uh, a bit dressy, but still everyday usable, that's, uh, that's one of the coolest SBGM221. Two, two, one. Two, two, one. GMT, look at the cream face of white. Uh, it's just, it it's gorgeous. It looks good on the back, man. They got some uh, mm. ooh, nice waves there. And also custom made bespoke Camille Fournay uh, strap, electric blue. And uh, if yeah, you shout out to Camille Fournay, if you want to send me some uh, free <laughs> swag, uh, I'll promote it. Uh, but I don't think he needs it. Uh, he's already promote. He's already uh, the uh, official uh, straps for GLC. Mm. Um, if you have the right angle, you will see the the light, the color of the uh, of the GMT hand, yeah. the blue hand, almost get. Yeah, you got it. You see, blue in the oven. Yeah, the electric oven. blue almost. And uh, of all the, the Grand Seco, this is the first one that I felt in love for. And uh, I just think the, the dial, the case, ah, everything about it. I love you, Simon. <laughs> I love to love you back. let me go. <laughs> oh, she's jealous uh, because there's another one. I hope they get along well. Uh, they all get along well. They all get some time. Oh, some, some wrist me. time. Some me time with you. Yep. Some you time. Uh, Where are we? Uh, yeah, you can. Oh, three Omegas. I think we've done. Uh, no, Rolex. Rolex. Let's go first Rolex. on Rolex and then let's tackle the Omega case. Well. Yeah, you, this you is like, know, okay, right? you Jubilee bracelet, fluted bezel, fluted motif dial, diamond set. Can, d d need I say more? Like this one is uh, bling, 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 bling. Yeah, but. But still, terrible. but still. Terrible every day. Yeah, it's an everyday wearer again, and uh, I can wear it with a suit at work. I can wear it if you go out on a night out with uh, with the wife uh, Definitely on a you date. You can wear it all the time. You yeah, know. pretty much. Pretty yeah, much. Kid, you want. <laughs> Not on my channel. Okay, <laughs> it's a kids friendly channel. Kids friendly. Now this one is thirty six uh, millimeter. I think for my wrist size, it's just uh, for our wrist size, I should say. But you, yeah. I know you own the the forty one. Is it forty one? Yeah, because my wife has a 36, so I had yeah. to uh, go one up. Mm -mm. Yeah. And it feels very, uh, you know, it's Rolex, so. Feels like a Rolex. Feels like a Rolex. Always, feels stuff. Uh, feels uh, uh, right at home on any wrist. Yeah, well made. Just a perfect, perfect watch. You know? Yeah, I, this one is maybe one that I waited the longest for. Do you long? After Rolex, like I do, do you obsess about it uh, every night before you go to bed? Uh, this like, one or like a GMT Master Two uh, Daytona? Oh man, yeah. Do, do you care for it? Yeah, I care for it. I still have a little wish list of uh, of, of Rolex that I wish I can get my hands on. Yeah, of course, yeah I would be happy with the Daytona, even would a you two -tone. Pay a premium. I, you know, the story that I paid a premium once yeah. in my life for for it. Uh, this one. I got it like uh, yeah retail price thankfully, but I bought a couple of Rolexes that year, so I think it, mm. I helped my case to to get yeah. more. But for some reason now in Hong Kong, uh, I don't get the call anymore. But they still have my wish list. But of course on the wish list there is the the Daytona uh, white face. Uh, there is uh, the root, the root beer. <laughs> there is the uh, the bad girl. So you see like all the <laughs> all yeah. the product impossible to get even if you spend. Well, what million. was great <laughs> is that well, first we don't have to spend anything because you can't get anything, yeah. and then they make new colors. Now they, they have the uh, yellow gold and steel GMT, which I'm starting to almost prefer to the root beer. Mm, yeah. That's cool. And then of course they have the lefty with the green and black, which is going to be the most collectible, uh, more than the, the Pepsi, I think. And uh, now they say they're going to make a Coke, yeah, which is bizarre the Coke. because they were saying they can't make the red for the Pepsi, so it just makes no sense. Yeah, it don't make a sense. This uh, I think they just make story. less Pepsi because they, want, they need to use the, the red for the, the Coke. <laughs> uh, that makes sense. Uh, but uh, don't get anything, so I don't have to spend any money, don't have to worry about it too much. Um, maybe if I pay uh, the, the premium, I would get the, the lefty. Mm. Uh, all right, Omega, Omega, Omega. Omega, got, uh, Omega. Three, let's start with the one you know, 3861 uh, caliber. Yep. Ooh, you can see. So Sapphire sandwich. Okay. No, so it says 3863 caliber. Yep. Uh, there you go. Uh, 
descending from the uh, Le Mania, of course. Two eight six one, my friend. Um, it started with the uh, eight six one, where they went to a uh, rem- uh, to a cam based operation instead of the column wheel, make it a bit more uh, easier to to set, easier to produce, and then Omega took over the manufacture of those in I think early seventies, and then uh, it evolved uh, in the one eight six one, one eight six three. And then uh, there you go. Now th- we have the coaxial. Is it master chronometer as well? It is. Yes. Master chronometer. You get the full uh, full omega power, right? Uh, who else could ma- could build uh, something uh, li- like this than uh, omega? Loving it. Actually, I'm gonna zoom because I don't think we've shown that movement uh, properly. I think Maybe we, when we I did, did it with in the first uh, collection review we've done in uh, 2020, 2021, I don't remember which year. Yeah, again, you get the nice finishing like they had on the 1863, but now it's rhodium plated. And, uh, but yeah, it's a nice architecture that you will recognize. Yeah, looking very cool. And uh, the brand new bracelet. And uh, You can't go wrong dot with this over watch. 90. Would you get the head white if uh, if you could? If I could, uh, I kind of liked it as well when I've tried it um, a week ago when we did the uh, Snoopy review. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this one great. Everybody likes it. No, this is one it, is, is it comfortable. It is extremely comfortable. Of course, like some people uh, will criticize, it can be a bit sharp here, mm-hmm. uh, rightfully so. But well, I can polish it for you. <laughs> Wait, I get some some cloth. <laughs> no, but. It's just a classic and it's a strap monster and uh, I, I've also have an Artem uh, black strap like similar to this. Oh yeah, uh, I remember this when one. you put it on. Yeah. yeah, exactly like this one, a loopless cell cloth yeah. but black. It goes extremely well with this watch. I also have the moon pattern rubber band, the same that goes with the moonshine gold that I have for this watch. Mm. So I like to change uh, the strap and the bracelet on this one. And actually uh, we're going to jump to this uh, other watch later. But uh, oh, that we can jump to oh, it. Okay, let's just go right away. Right uh, away, then. Eight five nine. A, a bit of a commercial uh, break. Uh, Artem strap. Artem straps. Artem <laughs> straps. Uh, try the new Hydroflex by Artem straps. If you've loved uh, the uh, the classic Artem straps, you will love the Hydroflex. You know when your money went uh, when you try the Hydroflex uh, on <laughs> your wrist. I love it personally. Even more because I get them for free. But uh, I really, no, seriously, I like the Hydroflex. Uh, well, this one was a great video, great story. Um, you got the, the first one to, uh, to, to grab it here in Hong Kong. In Hong Kong. Yeah. They didn't make too uh, many. It's a numbered edition. Oh, we got a good number, actually. Yeah, 300 something. 399. Yeah, and, 399. Uh, yeah, it's very much like the Batman uh, at mm. the back, Batman kind of watch. And this strap is actually. A leather strap from Omega OEM with the also the clasp from Omega that I've initially uh, bought for the Speedy that we were looking at three seconds ago, and the reason I put it on this strap is because it's spinning. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of you uh, may know I like my function. I like a, a nice black tie event from time to time, and I was looking at all my watches. Which one should I wear? And I decided to put it on that leather strap. And that's one of the watch I wore in one of those uh, function. I think it's just yeah. almost perfect, right? When you uh, met uh, Reynold. Oh, also, also, yeah, because I, I was you invited. You met, you met the CEO. Uh, oh, yeah. The group CEO. Guy, shout actually. out to Reynold. I had a wonderful discussion with him. Uh, we both speak perfect fl- French. <laughs> so that was extremely interesting. And, uh, of course, he, he saw the... The 859 on my wrist. That, oh, very uh, special. And you still love it? I still love it. Oh, yeah. This watch is just... Uh, Omega, they, they do those special watches. Uh, that's the one thing where they're, they're really different than, uh, than a Rolex, for example. They just do those tasty watches. And, and you see, you see my rant about GLC. You understand? GLC, uh, the w- movement manufacturer, and it's, they never make something special. And Omega comes out here and there every six months with just something special, not even on the website. Mm. Uh, and then you go there, they have it. And look at this uh, Dome Sapphire new case just for, for this watch. Movement that you're not going to see in the other ones. Just uh, 
just cool. Of course, they have such a history. They can just uh, dig into uh, dig into their history and bring back uh, you know modern built their classic watches. Which uh, which this is one of um, gorgeous sector dial. Yeah, it's an amazing dial. watch. And well, they're probably going to make a moon phase mm. and a calendar mm. just for you. Yes. Because you've asked, why not? So. I've asked him. I've asked the uh, original director in Asia. So I would like to think that if they release one this year, it's going to be a tiny bit because of me. That's just uh, in my little dreamy fantasy of... Uh, <laughs> and of course, we've reviewed recently uh, this little bit of kit, the sh Snoopy. Snoopy. Snoopy 50th anniversary. And uh, actually, uh, one of our friends educated us about uh, the 14 seconds. It takes 14 oh, yeah. seconds to go across the, the earth. Exactly, yeah. Let's, let's start it again. Let's do it again. Let's do it again. Do we uh, dare trying it again? Wait, I, I don't have... Uh, do you have something to time it? Uh, yeah, many let's things. Time oh, <laughs> two, three... Wait, no, this no, one. We need a quartz. We need a quartz watch. Uh, we need a quartz. I, wait, I oh, stop do it. I have one with me? Oh, look at the I reset <laughs> on the Snoopy. I think I might have one. No, 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 use the yeah. Zenit. Uh, yeah. You got a Zenit, chronograph. Let's do that. Yeah, are you ready? So you're going to start the timing when it reaches the Earth, I think? We just press at the same time, right? No, I think it's... Oh, is it until it reaches the Earth? It ne okay, no, it needs to... <laughs> I think it's now. Sounds two, like deja vu. Three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, so it's... the. Time it takes to cross the Earth is 14 seconds. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, don't, uh, we'll, we'll never get this right. No, no, actually, we were there. Like, You don't uh, start at the same time. You start when it uh, yeah. reaches the Earth, which is, are you ready? Hold on, I need to reset that. Yeah, Yeah. we'll start when Go. it... Go. So let's see if we have uh, 14 seconds. Well, you tell me when you get to 14, and we, we'll see where it is. Experiment. Stop. And yeah, you oh see. Yeah, 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 yeah. When it reaches the. Now we got it. We got it. Let's let's just settle it down. We got it. It it's the yeah, time it, it takes to. <laughs> Eyes on the stars. Uh, so you've been wearing it, enjoying it. Oh yeah, almost every day. Very actually. realistic. Uh, almost the every back. day. It's freaky. It's like yeah. oh my god. I don't think anybody at Omega yeah, ever the moon thought they would uh, build something like this. I think that the. As far as they should push this uh, Snoopy concept, that's getting uh, same with uh, James Bond with the animation at the back. I think they've pushed uh, the concept as far as it can before it gets sketch, like maybe the uh, Dark Side of the Moon has uh, mm. <laughs> become. Uh, but yeah, gorgeous uh, blue uh, blue watch and full review on the channel with Simon, of course. So there you go, uh, guys. Uh, let uh, let us know what you think about the collection so far. Um, there's a bit of red here. It's not only blue. It's not only blue. But uh, yeah, I like the coherence and the uh, function. Anything uh, w you're looking at? Would you add, for example, uh, independent? Yes, exactly. I think the next move for me would be uh, Habring. Habring too. Habring. 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 Any Austrian speaker? Or you could get the the Doppel. Ganger or no, the Doppel something. No, I like the Felix Foudroyant yes. from the Felix Hebring, Foudroyant. Hebring. Yeah, I love Again, it. Again, anybody in Hong Kong has a Felix uh, Foudroyant. The uh, one at 38.5, the latest uh, version, because I've tried uh, the first Foudroyant they've made. It that was, was garbage. Yeah, it was so thick. It was like <laughs> it was like almost two centimeter thick. No, I'm kidding. It was like, yeah, it was very high, very thick, yeah. very big. Uh, but I like the, the complication, uh, mm. second mort, dead beat second, as well as the foudroyant. So uh, it's just amazing when you, it's such a dynamic watch. When you look at it, it's always moving. But uh, yeah, they don't produce that, uh, that many of them. And uh, the previous version was, I could have got it actually, I could have just said yes, but it was just way too big for my wrist and too high on my wrist. But I'm confident that uh, in the coming months maybe it will take more than a year right. uh, I'll, I'll snap one there is a salmon dial version which i really enjoy and there's also a white the first one that comes to me i'll, I'll snap it but uh, yeah that would be the maybe the next uh, purchase if it comes to me yeah, speaking of fabric i really like the uh, mono pusher chronograph they brought for gphg 
2023. So that one I wouldn't mind having in my uh, in my collection. Cool. Well, that's about uh, all of it, and there was a lot of it. 40 minutes video. Not bad. Not bad. I think uh, we deserve a little drink now. So you oh, guys yeah. put your your comments down below. Give uh, Simon uh, a like, and uh, yeah. Remember, DVDSW, I mean, uh, Art and Straps, who else is sponsoring that, this video? <laughs> <laughs> Camille Fournet. <laughs> Camille Fournet. Uh, voilà. <laughs> uh, send me some swag, Camille. Uh, all right, guys. Bye-bye. Uh, Bye-bye. Au revoir. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir, Simon. Au revoir, merci.